You're watching Deck Pass Live. There's a shot of the hallowed names that have made Olympic teams from the Olympic trials have been held here at the Indiana University Natatorium. Of course, here in Indianapolis, Indiana, where we are for the fourth of six stops in the Tier Pro Swim Series. Hello, everybody. I'm Jeff Cummings, and what a first night of finals we had. Olympic gold medalists everywhere. World record was challenged, a lot of great racing. Let's get right to some of those highlights, shall we? So we're going to start off with probably the biggest race of the night that everybody was looking forward to was the women's 400 freestyle and after Katie Ledecky broke that 1500 world record last night I think everybody was anxious to see how she would attack tonight's 400 free even though she probably knew that she had that 100 free final later on I don't think that was on her mind when she stepped up on the blocks to start for this 400 and here she is coming into the 200 where she flipped at the wall and she was about a half second over her world record pace and she kind of maintained that throughout the race up until about the 300 and then she started to she flipped and then at the 350 wall when she comes in here she's about 1.2 seconds over and i think the crowd wanted to rally and really get her back on pace there to see if she can make it two for two in world records and you can see everybody, even people who aren't her Stanford teammates, cheering for her loudly. And they're just really excited. And Katie's really kicking the legs in, really turning it through. And again, she's not even thinking she's got that 100 freestyle later on. She's thinking, I'm going to put in the best swim I've got here. And look how far ahead she is of Leah Smith, who's running second, full 10 meters ahead. And here she is coming into the wall. What's the time going to be? 357.94. Not too bad. She's happy. A little nod of the head. Second fastest time in history. And I think she's going to be pretty excited about knowing what she's got later on this summer, knowing that, you know, she's not even fully tapered. And it was the fastest time ever swum in the United States. So I think she's happy about breaking another record in that one. All right, so we'll move on to the women's 100 butterfly to uh, Katie's Olympic teammate, Kelsey Dahlia. And Kelsey has been staying in place here the past year or so as the queen of U.S. Sprint Butterfly and waves to the crowd, always love to uh, wave to the crowd and, and get them going. And the reason Kelsey's been so good is she, she has a great start, great underwater dolphin kicks, and that helped her get out to a little bit of a lead on this first 50. And when you're doing sprint races, the turns are always very important to set that up well. And Kelsey gets off that wall very well, gets deep underwater, great dolphin kicks. And when she surfaces, she actually extends her lead. And look at that, almost to 15 meters, which you have to do if you want to contend for international medals in the butterfly races and she just continues to build on that lead even though we got some upstarts there behind her including her louisville teammate mallory comerford who's pretty much been known for freestyle races i think might be adding the butterfly to her program this summer just to see what she can do and here's kelsey coming into the wall 57 38 pretty respectable for mid-may i think kelsey's going to be pretty happy with that i think a lot of these, these ladies are looking at to see if they can topple Kelsey but it's gonna be very hard to do she's gonna be doing very well this summer and I'm anxious to see what she's gonna do in Irvine all right so we're gonna look at the results here of that 100 butterfly real quick so there's Kelsey and as I said Mallory Comerford she could be a threat in that butterfly race next up we have the men's hunter freestyle a very very stacked field and their top qualifier, Blake Pironi, just coming off an outstanding NCAA championships, his last NCAA championships. Next to him, Justin Ress, another up-and-comer, had a great NCAA championships, doing very well in the sprint freestyles as of late. And just, uh, just an incredible feeling. You see there, Ryan Hale moving up there in lane number seven, an Olympic teammate of Nathan Adrian and Blake Pironi. Then there's Mr. Reliable. I call him Mr. Reliable because he's always going to put forth some great swims. Nathan Adrian, and of course, there's Ryan Held. Kind of a local boy. I think he grew up not too far from here in Illinois. I think his family came out to visit. So this was a very stacked field, and it includes Zach Apple, who in lane, who's in lane number two, just moved up to Bloomington to train in Indiana. He was on the world championship team last year, a bit of a surprise. And this field took it out fast. They were really fast at the 25. I think they were really trying to, someone wanted to be the rabbit, and including Justin Rester in lane number five. He was really great at the, at the breakout. And then kind of right here at the 25, Nathan starts to really turn on another gear, a gear I think he didn't want to put on that early. But I think he said, I, I want to be first at the 50. And he was really turning those, those arms over and really get to the wall. And here he is turning at 23-3. Not a bad first opening 50. 
Now, here is where I think Nathan was probably a little nervous because he's breathing away from his, his competitors. He's breathing to his right. His competitors are on his left. So he can't really see what's going on. But, you know, Nathan's been doing this for a while. I think this is his 10th year on the national team. So he knows what he's doing going into these final 10 meters. Puts his head down, starts straight arming it. Justin Rest, Blake Peroni, Ryan Held all battling for second. And then there's Mr. Reliable, 48-69. Very good swim for Nathan. I think Blake Peroni's got to be happy with getting second and Justin Ress and Ryan Held. These guys are going to be really tough coming up this summer. You know, that 400 free relay is going to be a great event for the United States at Pan Pax. You're going to have Australia is going to really be able to challenge them there. And I also want to just throw out another event that I thought was my personal highlight tonight, men's 200 breaststroke. Just congratulations to Daniel Roy, 2097, the youngest American male ever to break 210, breaking the 17-18 national age group record. He's going to be a factor this summer at nationals. And uh, speaking of nationals, you don't want to miss it. You definitely want to get your tickets now to go to Irvine at the end of July to see the best swimmers in the United States battling it out. This is a very important nationals. They're going to be picking a lot of international teams. The Pan Pacific Championships teams will be picked here. The Pan American Games team will be picked here. World University Games. And even kind of in a way the, the next year's World Championship team is going to be picked here. So these guys are going to be really motivated. And as you see there, that hashtag, they're going to be fired up and they're going to be ready to race and you don't want to miss any of that so make sure you start to think about your plans and get those tickets now so as you see there that's uh josh Pernot there on that graphic and uh great breaststroker he's going to be challenging for a, a national title and speaking of breaststrokers when we come back we're going to have our my chat with cody miller All right, so I'm here with 2016 Olympian and guy who gets my vote for the best hair on the U.S. national team, <laughs> Cody Miller. Cody, how are you today? Thank you. I'm doing great. Thank All you. All right, so I've got a question for you that's going to determine if this interview actually takes place. Okay. All right, Team Laurel or Team Yanny? Team Laurel. All right. <laughs> We're going to continue. I don't so know what. Silly. It is it's so silly. silly. But it's like consumed America it's right now. It's taking over the world, man. I'm going to be honest. I actually can hear both. I don't know if that's normal, but but that's the one I heard first, so that's the one I'm going with. Yeah. But good, good gracious, man. I know it's yeah. it's blown up Twitter. I don't know what's going yeah. on here. All right, so we're here at IU Natatorium. It's just about an hour from your house in Bloomington. Yeah. Do you like it when the meets are close, or do you I like to travel? It. No, I love it, dude. I can just roll out of bed in the morning, just drive up, and you know get here when I, my leisure. And then I love this pool. This is my favorite pool, no doubt. I've had a lot of really great swims in this pool. Um, I'm a little bit biased because I'm an Indiana guy, but like in my opinion, I think they should just like host almost every major meet here. Like I don't see why NCAA's isn't here every single year. Yeah. It's central, you know. It's it's fair for everyone to travel to, and it's like you can't beat the facility. Anyway, I'm biased, but you know. Yeah, but. and it's loud when it gets when you get a lot of people in here. Yeah, you can pack this place out, and it's great. So um, I got another sports question for you, right. since we're gonna talk about sports a lot. The Vegas Golden Knights. Killing it. Killing it. Yeah, I don't think there's ever been a team that young that is doing this well. It's yeah. amazing. And I'm not, like, the biggest hockey fan, but I have been paying attention, and it's, like, it's really been fun to watch. Well, since you were born and raised in Nevada, you got to yeah. cheer for them. I mean, yeah. this is going to yeah. be really cool if yeah. they make it to the NHL I finals. I know, I know. It's really, it's really exciting. I feel like I'm getting texts from my friends back home every single day. They're like, dude, did you see this? I'm like, yeah, it's pretty cool. So how much do you follow other sports at all? Honestly, eh, maybe this is criminal, but I'm not a huge sports guy. Um, I'm more of like a nerdy kind of dude. Uh, but you know, a little, now, now that I live in Indiana, like we're in the basketball state, yeah. right? Like Indiana is so big. So a little bit of college basketball now, a little bit of the NFL, but not not a lot, honestly, not a lot. I think you they might kick you off campus if yeah. you're not following IU That's basketball. The thing. You're exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. So if you haven't been watching Cody's YouTube channel, you're missing out. I mean. What is it now? You're up to about 50 vlogs right now, almost 50? Uh, I'm getting close to that, yeah. I mean, if you count the Q&A videos, it's probably close to 100 videos. But, uh, you know, it's really taken off in a way that I didn't expect. Uh, I kind of did it just as, for something to do, like as a hobby, something to be fun. And it's taken off in a really cool way, and I'm pretty excited about it. So, How much planning goes into those things? It totally depends. Half the time, not much at all. Other times, I have, like, an idea of something that I think will be cool, and I, and I do put some planning in, so it totally depends. 
Um, but most of the time, it's like, I'm like, I think I'm going to do, if I think I have a, a day where there's like a lot of fun stuff that, you know, if I have like a really cool set that I'm going to do, I think people would like to see and share that. And, you know, so it totally depends. Sometimes I just wing it, man. So it's Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning, we do Speed and Power. It's a hundred set that Coach Ray writes, and he's going to briefly explain what the set is. Ray, what's the set like today? A power set that's focused on the hundred. So the stroke count, the tempos the body positions, and we go in and out of the resisted, um, naked, and naked means like no equipment. Type, not not naked. Work. Yeah, <laughs> not, not really naked. So they're about 10 minutes each, so how, how much extra footage is in there that's never used? Some, it, totally, it depends. Sometimes there's a lot. Sometimes I probably cut out two-thirds of the footage I film. Sometimes not, an, you know, not all. Sometimes there's like a six-minute video and all the footage I filmed I use. It just totally depends. But, you know, that's the, the fun part is like the, the editing process. It's a little bit weird walking around like holding a camera. Like it's weird. Like people look at you like, what does that guy do? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of getting over that. But the, when I get cutting it together and like, you know, putting music to it, that's kind of the fun part. So, yeah, it's been fun. Do you think that's something you want to do, be in – Film production, film editing? Dude, I have no idea. It's something that I'm interested in, and, and I'm learning as I go. Like, I'm a total amateur. I had no idea what I was doing. I just bought a program, bought a computer, and I was like, I'm just going to try stuff. And I'm doing okay. Like, people are telling me they like it, so that's good. Maybe it's something I'll do later on. Who knows, man? But, you know, I love swimming, too, so putting the two together has been fun. Yeah. All right, so I know you're a big movie buff. I'm a big movie buff. I spend more time, probably as much time in movie theaters as I do at the pool. So, what's been the best movie you've seen so far in 2018? Infinity War. Avengers Infinity War. I had the most fun time in that theater. You know what? A close second was actually A Quiet Place. Yes. It was good. Like, it, it shook me. And I'm not like a scary movie guy. It's not like a horror movie. My wife loves horror movies. I have to watch all of them. But A Quiet Place, Infinity War, and I'm really pumped to see Deadpool 2 this weekend. Yeah, Deadpool 2 is going to be really cool, but i got to agree with you about A Quiet Place. I saw it twice, and I don't like scary movies either. But I just had to see it again because I was like, I know I missed stuff, and I actually saw it in this movie theater where, like, the seats rumble. Oh, was that like a 4DX theater? Or? Yeah. I've never been to one of those. They're really cool. You know, all the little jump scares, and when the aliens jump out the seats, it, it scares you more. But it was really cool, and I just loved it. I was just like, I was telling friends, you got to go see it. And I've been talking about it. I yeah. just can't get over it. I don't not know what it is. People have seen it. People, you need you need to go see that movie. Yeah. And it's not like people who typically don't like scary movies, like friends of mine, like it. Because yeah. it's not like your typical horror movie. You know, it's more of like a suspenseful thriller uh, where you're just like at the edge of your seat the whole time. It's good. I loved it, man. I'm jealous you got to see it in one of those theaters. Oh, it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. So when you're in swim practice and you're, you know, you're filming a vlog, you're filming your sets and stuff like that, you know, are you thinking about, you know, how you're influence, how influencing the people who are watching us, these young kids who are coming up to you and asking these questions about everything? A little bit, yeah. That's been, like, the biggest thing is that I think the, me making these videos have made me a little bit more approachable. So just today alone, I probably had no short of 10 people, I have no idea who they are, approach me and, and start talking to me. Most of them are young kids, mm -hmm. and that's super cool. And, um, yeah, when I'm in practice swimming, sometimes I think about, you know, what part of this work I could I share with people that, you know, people maybe didn't know, what could they learn, what's fun, what's interesting, you know? Because that's like when I was young, and that's like one of the biggest things that I push with my YouTube channel, I was like, I'm no different from like the 12-year-olds that are at this meet, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to know like, what do Olympians do? What are they like? What do they, what do they train like? And, you know, for, with my YouTube channel, I can share a little bit of that. And it's been fun, and it's, you know, it's just real, and people see it, and, Thankfully, a lot of them are liking it. So, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of that thought goes into my head for sure. All right, we just got to look a bit a little bit ahead. Irvine, yeah. really important summer. Yeah. Making pan packs, making worlds. It's even kind of planning for 2020. Yeah. You know, how does that motivate you in the pool every day? Yeah, I mean, we're like about 10, 9 or 10 weeks out right now. It's like a weird, it, it's a weird time for me because, you know, this past year I took more time off than I've ever taken before. You know, I just needed to do other things, needed to branch out, and now I'm like refocused and committed to swimming again. And so, you know, uh, I don't know how, how things are going to go. Like, I'm pretty, I'm confident and I think it's going to go well, but like looking at Irvine, for me, four years ago is when I won my first long course national title. Like, that's the first time I broke a minute in the Irvine pool. And so, like, look at, like, when I think about that pool again, like, that motivates me. Like, I want to, you know, I want to be able to do something special again. You know, there's a, a lot of good memories that I cherish at that pool. 
And, uh, and it's, it's an exciting time, man. It's really exciting. You know, it's kind of crazy to think that we're almost to the halfway mark on the quad. It's crazy. So, like, that, that is motivating in, in itself. Like, when I think about it, I'm like, dude, like, let's go. You know what I mean? And I'm sure you guys at, at IU are really rising to occasion. It's been a really good year. I mean, not just you as a pro swimmer. I mean, you were kind of out there on your own grinding it away while those college swimmers were just – hammering it out at NCAA. So you must have felt a real sense of pride seeing yeah. the work that you put in yeah. as a collegiate swimmer kind of helping to build to where they are now. Yeah, I'm really proud of the Indiana team. Um, when I came into college, they were 13th or 14th in the NCAA. And then every year I swam, we, we got better. And, you know, for us to come in and there, get, be in the running to win and then to get third. And, you know, looking at the team for next year, I think they're in a good position to, you know, to win for the first time in 40 years. I'm really, really proud of that, that I've been able to be a part of that, that I'm still around with that. We have such a good training group, like such a good environment, you know, especially the breaststroke group with, like, me, Lily, and Ian, and everybody else in that group. It's, like, it's, it's been really stellar. So it's a lot of fun. Can you imagine Cody Miller, Lily King, Ian Finnerty, three of the fastest breaststrokers in the United States, hammering it out up and down the pool every day? I, I get chills just thinking yeah, about that. It's pretty fun. <laughs> it's very competitive, but honestly, it's, it's a good time. Yeah, I can't imagine nothing but laughter and fun every day. Yeah, yeah, a lot of that. Lot Even of that. when Ray tries to, you know, pound you into submission. <laughs> yeah, Ray, Ray's a funny guy, man. He's a, he's a really funny guy. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. All right, Cody, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck the rest of this meet. And uh, we'll see you in Irvine. All right, sounds good. Thank you, guys. So great talking with Cody about just almost everything. We talked about hockey. We talked about movies. We talked about his vlog. I just love talking about every, almost anything but swimming with a lot of these famous swimmers because you can kind of get to know who they are besides what they're doing when they swim up and down the pool. So thanks again, Cody. So you don't want to miss it. Tomorrow we're going to have another two great episodes of Deck Pass Live after prelims and after finals. And look who we have tomorrow. Cullen Jones, Olympic gold medalist, is going to be joining me live after finals tomorrow. You do not want to miss it. Cullen is one of the fa most, my most favorite people I've ever interviewed. And I've been talking to him a lot. It'll be interesting to see what he's been doing, getting, getting ready for what is, as we've talked to a lot of people about, a very important summer. So you don't want to miss those Deck Pass Live episodes. Be sure to go to USA Swimming to watch all the races and prelims. And, of course, NBC is going to be bringing you live coverage of the finals tomorrow night with Rowdy Gaines. I know you love them, so don't miss that. All right, so that's going to do it for us here at the IU Natatorium tonight. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.